appointment. I've got a date. Time to get going or we're going to be late. Yes, from Brisbane to Perth, it's time to get going. Time to see for yourself the greatest advance in Holden yet. Now, with new beauty, new features, and the big thrill of new hydromatic automatic transmission, Holden offers you even finer motoring, even greater value for your money. Why don't you call now and see the exciting Holden range with new styling, new features, and new hydromatic three-speed automatic. Hello again, Liam from Unique Cars and Parts, and I'm with Stuart, a colleague of mine who happens to own an EK Holden, a 138-1962 model, and he's built a special one here for your son. Yep, four years, four years old, and that's his little pride and joy. So you take this car to shows, you were telling me, and, you, and you, your son sits in that. Yep. So he, <laughs> does he get more interest in that than you do for this one? Uh, yeah, he does. He sort of steals the show and he loves every bit of it because, you know, four-year-olds hate attention. So, um, yeah, he's very proud of it. Um, and I sort of made it as much, you know, as I could to replicate mine. Um, like, you can see, like, the special badges, they're, like, um, legitimate ones off an EK sort of glove box. So we've put them on the guards. Um, I've got the same little custom number plate as mine. Uh, I even, with because I did the, um, the interior, so leftover vinyl is actually used the same as his seat so it's all matching <laughs> now back to your car yeah, sure. how long have you owned it uh i've had this since 92 so it was my first car i was 17 so you can do the math. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so nearly 20 nearly 20 years well more than 20 years 92 so 92. it's almost 30 years nearly th th wow yeah. Okay, well, you're getting on. Yeah, well, well thanks. <laughs> well, the car's obviously quite old. So I know a little bit about these. This is the uh, the six model Holden to come out. Okay. And it was the, the third body shape. So we had the 48215, the FJ, yeah. FE, FC, FB, and EK. And EK was famous for two introducing two things for Holden. You'd know what they are. Okay. Um... I don't know. I'm, I'm only trying. Something here myself. I'm trying to show off a little bit. Well, the, the EK was the first one that came out. Oh my God! And you've got it. The EK was the first car Holden to come out with an automatic transmission. Well, there you go. <laughs> and you've got it. A hydromatic, fully imported from America, of course. And so this car's actually got one. It's not. A, obviously, still come with the three on the tree as well. But that is great. You've got the. You've got the genuine hydromatic transmission. The other one. Well, the. The other big, the big, the big improvement they made. It, you'd notice it on a rainy day. Oh, okay. Windscreen wipers, maybe. Yeah, well, the windscreen wipers were electric, yeah, yeah. and on the FB and previous models, they were vacuum operated, oh, which okay. which were great if you were going downhill, yeah. or terrible if you were going uphill. Yeah. It was sort of like started like that. I had an FC Holden. You didn't want to drive it in the wet. Now, you've, you've owned it for 30 years. We know that it comes with a 138 engine. Mm. They, they were stock, and there was only one engine choice. Yep. That's still got the same engine? It doesn't, no. it's um, It's got a 202 in it with a Trimatic. So, okay. Oh, so I'm his, I'm thinking that I'm looking at a hydromatic, but it's, it's the original shifter, yeah. but just with a trimatic. Yeah, correct. Yeah. What, what happened to the original ones? Um, to be honest with you, they probably went to the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, look, the red motor was, uh, oh, people will get right, ripped right into me, but the red motor was a little bit easier to work on than the grey. Yeah. It was just, oh, well, look, I did it when, you know, I was... A kid and you wanted sort of a bit more power and everything and to be honest with you it's probably safer that you're not sort of um you know lagging behind traffic these days so and it's yeah. got the um the hr disc brake front end in as well ah so there you put the hr discs in that that's a good thing and you put mags but you're telling me you've got the original wheels as well i do i do have the original wheels and i sort of alternate depending on you know what i feel like at the time but yeah, yeah. and now this is not a daily driver no. it is this is special occasions but before we kicked off the interview, you were telling me that there was a special reason why you chose this model Holden 30 years ago yep. above all the other Holden, old Holdens, classic Holdens that are out there. Yeah, look, at that stage, I was, I was in love with the 57 Chevy shape, but, you know, being a 17-year-old, you cannot afford that. So um, I think they were, they were expensive even back then. So this was obviously, you know, the, the uh, Australian GM version of it, the styling queue. So yeah. it was as close as I can afford. And, yeah, I'm, I'm actually probably prefer that I, I have got this train version now as I get older so um. oh, I, I think you made a wise choice to be honest with you you know fins fins seem to come and go fairly quickly and what we had the FB introduced in 60 
and the EK saw the end of days at 62. So a, a two a two model lineup of this body shape, and it didn't last all that long. So I can't imagine there's a whole lot of these around. Yeah, and especially this colour, I've been told, because that's the original colour. It's been repainted, but um, the Madang Maroon, I think it was called, and I think that's quite a, a rarer or less common colour as well. Now, if somebody was interested in old Holdens and they said, Stuart, how could I tell the difference between, I've got a tram about to go past, <laughs> how could I tell the difference between an FB and an EK? How would you be able to spot the difference between the two models? Yeah, look, there's the, the most noticeable one is the, the stripe down the side. Um, the FB has, obviously, the, you know, the, the stripe down the side um, and you know the same color roof as the the body um, so but obviously the EK has you know, the body and then the, the roof and there's also slight sort of if you you know what you're looking at there's differences in the front indicators and grill. They, they better integrated the indicators into the grill and I think it went from six sl uh, horizontal slats to eight horizontal slats. Oh, okay I didn't know that one. But <laughs> <laughs> The minor things that a Holden person would know, and I'm not necessarily a Holden person, but somebody will say, no, you're an idiot. It was yeah. nine slats. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, look, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. Maybe we could have a look under the under the bonnet and, and yeah. have a look at that. It, you, know, you said 202? Yeah, correct. So have a look at that 202. The running gear is orig the original EK, except for the front the front end that you've changed for the HR. Yep, correct. And and that's, that means that you get to drive this into work every now and then. I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I. I actually do drive it most days, but only short drives to sort of drop off my son at childcare. So he loves it because um, originally when he came along, I didn't have, you know, the, um, the the sort of child seat in the back. And, you know, he was sort of so into it. I thought, well, why, you know, this is here to enjoy. I'm not going to sort of, um, you know, protect it too much from him. And so now we enjoy it and it's great. And, I, and just, uh, Stuart, looking here, I can see the original radio. That 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 looks. Uh, that's one of the smartest looking Holden integrated radios I've seen for, for something of this age. Typically, they've got the cutout there with the and, and they've put an aftermarket thing in. But you've managed to to get the original. Well, it is an it's an AWA one, but it is made specifically for an FBEK. So it, it's not like I guess the NASCO, um, you know, um, the specific one that came out from Holden. But at the time, it was specifically made for this yeah. this car. Yeah. And are you familiar with a guy called Macca that's got a, a, an EK that he's modified quite heavily? Yeah, I do. He's, I think he's got almost every NASCO sort of edition you can he's, put on it. He's, he, he's even d done some work to the boot. I think they call, call it the Continental Spare Tire thing. Well, I've done an interview with Macca, and I'll put a link down below so that you can have a look at that one if you're interested. But let's start up the motor and listen to this thing purr. And as I was setting up to do the interview with Stuart and his fantastic looking EK, another colleague of mine, David, who happens to work at the zoo as well, came over to see what all the hoopla was about and you came over and said, you owned an EK too. That's right, yeah, Liam, and it's exactly the same story as um, Stuart. So, um, first car as well when I was 18 was an EK um, and again, loved the uh, 57 Chev. That, that was the dream car, still is, a matter of fact, um, but this was the next best thing and this was the one I could afford back in the time and uh, yeah it's same story like had the original grey motor um, uh, the, uh, one, three, the hydromatic yeah hydromatic transmission so it was fully yeah. stock yeah. Um, originally owned by uh, Mantello Holden out in Faulkner mm -hmm. um, so it was very original stock car um, but yeah so the grey motor finally died on me and um, did this went down the same track um, put the 202 and trimatic transmission you know disc brakes and all that um, so yeah brilliant brilliant uh, everyday drive actually back then and we got we got the choppers over here but we'll push on how long has it been since you had your EK? 
Uh, so, well, gee, what that, that's going back um, more than 30 years now, um, you know, getting onto... Probably About the same time that Stuart was buying his. Probably buying his, I was selling mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, well, I did, I looked, as, as part of my research, I looked up what happened back in 1961. Well, this is a 62 model. Back in 61, this was first launch. You know, Sophia Loren won, won an Academy Award and Chico Marx died. And I don't know why that's relevant at all, but I just thought I'd throw that in there to show that I did try and do a little bit of research. Yeah, always good to know what was happening at the time. Yeah. At the time. I was born that year too. Oh, right, there you go. Yeah. That shows my age. Good year, good year. <laughs> now, you, you, as you were going over with Stuart, you noticed a few things had been changed. Uh, the obvious thing is the, well, the, the obvious thing is the engine, yes. but, but you found a couple of other little things that he's modified to make it, I guess, more of a drivable car today. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the big one that I noticed was the um, accelerator pedal, because um, the, you know, EK fans out there will know um, that the accelerator pedal was originally mounted on the floor. Um, and it had a, basically an arm mechanism. It wasn't driven by a, a cable, um, which worked fine for the original 138. Um, but once I modified it, uh, it, it just didn't work that well and it would it would stick and it was a, a bad driving experience yeah. um so yeah so um stuart setup i think would be much more drivable yeah and uh, now dave obviously you've got a lot of passion for the ek but you don't have yours anymore no, unfortunately w w not. why did you get rid of it um oh look it was just just the times as it was you know I was, I was still a young kid you know in comparison um i i really couldn't afford to have two cars at the time um because you know it just wasn't the the ideal car to really be a daily driver um so i had to make the yeah really difficult Difficult decision to let it go and you know regret it to this day but especially when I see another one it just it just brings it all back again one as sharp as this one this one presents really really well yeah no mine was, was pretty neat um, you know I had the uh, original uh, paint color as well on mine with the white roof it was Persian lilac actually was the color of mine that, that, that's the purpley pink very light purple color not yeah. the um not the very common coral you see heaps of them in that that pink coral color mm -hmm. um, but this was quite a unique um, color as well but it was a standard one I found out um, so yeah very nice looking car just kept it very stock on the outside had white wall tires on it and all that you didn't really know that it was modified uh, unless you took a look under a bonnet or got behind the wheel of course then you then you felt the difference and and you fitted a 202 as well correct yeah 202 um slightly modified um i put a quarter race cam in there uh 350 holly carb um had the extractors on there and these had a, a bendix um carburetor as stock but but we're not looking at the original motor anyway, so I guess it's a, a mute point at this stage. Yeah, that's it. So um, I thought I wasn't too worried about what happened under the hood because it didn't affect the, the, the look of the car. Yeah. Um, well, it made it more drivable. Exactly. And it, so the drivetrain was fully updated, you know, um, again, with this brake front end, um, and I had an 8-inch diff on the back. So much more drivable car. Uh, Stuart, you, did you change the diff on this one? Uh, it's got a 3.08 diff center, yep. so, so it gets a, a better driving experience. Well, look, what I'm going to ask you to do, Dave, is sit, sit in the back with my GoPro and take, do a bit of filming. And I'm going to ask Stuart if he wouldn't mind just taking us for a quick ride around the block, as I'd love to go for a ride in it. And I think uh, the viewers might like to watch this thing take on the bitumen. Yeah, sounds brilliant. Okay. Thank you, boys. Well, Stuart, it's been a long time since I've uh, been in a car with a manual choke. Absolutely, yeah. Don't get them these days. <laughs> so, you know, and, and that's obviously connected to the tour too, so you still got to use in the mornings? Yeah, yeah, on the colder mornings, yeah, but it's not too bad, actually. And these heater controls, were they a standard fixture back in the back in the day, or is this some sort of an option? I believe they were standard, but the actual um, the heater beneath was an option, so you could have the blow-through as, I think, standard, but... Yeah. So, so where, where, if I was to say I want a bit, bit of air on me, which I probably do want because it's not, not that <laughs> not that cold a day, if I push that, is that push it up and it would work? That's correct. Yeah, and that just sort of opens the air vents at the front and sort of blows through. And where does it where does the air come through the through the bottom here? Does it? Yeah, it comes through the bottom, but it's sort of changed. Um, well, there's vents on the top as well, so it blows through and, and um, I guess gives. Oh, the, yes. Yeah, up onto the windscreen, but. You know, not very effective as a demister, I tell you. <laughs> no, and you've got a rear demister on the back? Yeah, yeah, put that one in. Um, just, again, out of sort of safety and necessity and sort of frustration after a few years not having it, so. And oh, I'm assuming here everything everything's working. Your generator light, your temperature, your temperature warning light, your, your fuel gauge? Yeah, it's all connected. Yep, yeah, all, all works. And I love the I love the old style speedo. Does yeah, that great, does that go all the way? It just shows you the wall all the way up. It does, yeah, 
if you can push it all the way yes. around, yeah. And, and if we were pushing and Stuart, what, what sort of top speed could we hope to get out of this old girl? Oh, I'm not sure. I've never probably, you know, pushed it. I'd say it would get right around, but... Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we should try one day. <laughs> <laughs> right round to 110 miles an hour. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that I want to be going at that speed. No offence. No, no, no. no it, I feel totally safe in this uh, sort of aftermarket seatbelt. Of course, these weren't a, a fixture back then. No, no, they were, I think they were an optional, optional extra, actually. So and, uh, pro yeah, a NASCO optional extra, and they're certainly not retractable. No, no. <laughs> I even like the way the indicators, you know, they don't put much thought into indicators now, do they? They just, no, just it. one one bloody central console thing with all of your instruments in it and, and a light. Uh, now it's, yeah, well, back then it was it was literally, well, the way I see it is it, it's, you know, piece of art and, you know, really attention to detail and, and everything existed back there. Yeah, much, much nicer. So you've got heat and air yep. and you've got this, this optional fan booster that, mm -hmm. that does warm you up. It does actually, yeah, it really does. It's quite effective, um, and it's much better at blowing the air through up onto the demister as well, which is, I guess, primarily why I got it. And you've had the seats relined; they look absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you've had the headlining redone; I can tell that. Yeah. You've re you've repainted it, but kept it original. Yeah. Two hundred two motor. You've changed the diff. I put a new diff center in it, so it's a better ratio. So it's cruising at high speeds; it doesn't sort of rev too much. So does that does that affect its you know off the mark performance? Um, no, not really, because it's got um, a bit of work done to the motor and it's a bigger motor than it came out with. Um, it still gets off the mark you know, very well, so it's fine. Okay, and uh, apart from that, I was going to say all original, but I'm looking at a cluster of three gauges here. They're not original. No. So what, what, have, what have you put on and, and do you use them much? Uh, look, I, I watch the, the engine temperature the most. Um, but yeah, the others, the oil pressure and, and um, the vacuum, you know, manifold vacuum, I don't really watch that much. But definitely, definitely keep an eye on the, the, you know, the, the water temp. Well, we're going up Royal Parade now. This is an opportunity for us to wind it out to 100. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit better than standard. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just love that speedo. It looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. And my son loves the, the line here, he always points at it. Uh, look, the, the, the horn hub of Holden's, early Holden's, are, are just, again, a work of beauty, aren't they? They're artful. They wanted the, to present the car in its best light. And I guess back in the day when you'd sit in the car, you'd be, this is what you'd be presented with. No sat-navs or super uh, hi-fi systems to distract you. Exactly. It, just, just pure, you know, driving <laughs> enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> and what better way to do it than in a Holden? What a shame they're not with us anymore. I know, very sad, but I guess it makes it more, um, maybe it, it sort of piked the value in the one, in people who have still got them. So Now, I noticed on the front you don't have club plates on there, so that's because you drive it daily, don't you? Or almost daily, weekly? Yeah, most days. I, I, um, I decided to yeah start driving my son around and there's a, a kid seat in the back because um, he absolutely loves it. So I thought, well, you know, what better way to, to sort of instill the love of Holden's and, and enjoy it with him. So, yeah, I, I drop him off at Kinder most days, which yeah. is great. And so that necessitates that you keep it on standard registration? It does, but I... I Despite that, I was always adamant because it is the original registration, so the black and white plate still, and, and that's pretty rare. So for me, you know, I, I, I like to keep the originality of it, and that's just my choice, I guess. But you know, don't have it on club plates, but are you a member of a club? No, I'm not actually. I've many times meant to join the FBEK um, uh, club, but you know, and I'm, I'm sort of on and off active on the forum website. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually joined the club yet. I've done a few sort of participated in, in a couple of Anzac Day parades with the club um, where you take the you know the old guys around um, down St Kilda Road in the Anzac Day March which is fantastic. Well this this would be a modern car for them. Well yeah <laughs> that's right well the, you know and you know most of them said oh I used to have one. <laughs> They'd be looking down here going what do you call that it's a heater. Yeah true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well look Stuart, this has been absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoy, enjoyed myself, not, not only getting to talk to you about it and to Dave about it, but then going for a drive in it, uh, one of the rare opportunities. Uh, before we go, yep. does it work? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shall, we, shall we switch it on? You've got to wait for a little while. It's, uh, it's an old valve well, job. Yeah, so, but it'll fire up. Got to be careful with the music. If I put this on YouTube, you see, if it's playing a modern song, that's it. I'll, I'll get a strike. 
No, only plays AM. And <laughs> That's still enough to get you a strike. Back when they had the channels indicated. It works. It works. <laughs> Absolutely. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have to turn it down before I get yeah. into trouble. <laughs> Ridiculous, but, but but that's YouTube. What is the car you should be driving? Hydromatic Holden is the one. Yes, Holden with new hydromatic automatic transmission is the big news for 61. What? Is the car you'll soon be driving? Hydromatic Holden is the one. Hydromatic is the world famous automatic transmission you'll find on Cadillac, Pontiac, and Oldsmobile. Holden's three speed automatic gear changing is smooth and positive. It's the most automatic automatic of them all. Hydromatic Holden. Yes, it's the one. Over 48% of all new cars sold in Australia during the first seven months of this year were Holden's. Holden has advanced styling, advanced value, advanced economy. Advance your motoring with Holden, Australia's leading car. See and test drive Holden at Urquhart and Nicholson Motors. Phone Kuma 157. Fifty-eight percent of all new commercial vehicles sold in the first seven months of this year were Holden's. That's because Holden Utility and Holden Panel Van are worth more in dependability, economy and proven capacity for hard work. Buy Holden Utility or Holden Panel Van, the sales leaders, at Urquhart and Nicholson's. Phone Kuma 157. Holden Station Sedan gives you true sedan luxury. Six passenger comfort, plus all the space you need for bulky loads, for camping, picnics, for family fun. Test drive Holden Station Sedan at Urquhart and Nicholson Motors, phone Kuma 157. Be a modern motorist. Set the pace in new Holden Sedan. New beauty, new value, new hydromatic transmission, the most automatic automatic of them all. Holden Sedan is the most modern and reliable car on Australian roads. Test drive Holden Sedan at Urquhart and Nicholson's, phone Kuma 157.